No rules, Championship Weekend. Yeah. 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 All right, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here at Phoenix Raceway. Uh, for Championship 4 Media Day, uh, we are going to turn our attention up here in the deadline room um, as we welcome in members of our N NASCAR and NBC broadcasting team. We have Rick, Rick Allen, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Steve Latar, and Jeff Burton. Um, NBC Sports will carry the Xfinity Series Championship race on Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on USA Network. And then we'll carry the NASCAR Cup Series title race on Sunday at 3 p.m on NBC. I'm actually going to turn it over to you guys to get started. Rick, we can start with you and then go down the line. Uh, just give us a few opening remarks here. Great. Um, sorry that we're interrupting. You guys uh, have hard at work. Uh, Jenna, I see you're hard at work. Um, but we appreciate you guys uh, listening to us for just a little bit. Looking forward to both the championship races uh, on the Xfinity side as well as the Cup side. Uh, I'm actually looking forward most to seeing if Steve can make it through the whole weekend. Uh, last year he had his appendix removed on Saturday night, wasn't able to be there on Sunday. So if we can keep him for the whole weekend, uh, I think it would be excellent. Um, great uh, field on both sides. Uh, for, from my standpoint. Um, looking forward to both of them. I don't think there's a clear-cut favorite, uh, either in the Xfinity side or on the Cup side, and I think that makes it better for us uh, to watch it all play out in front of us. So looking forward to it. I have a lot of fun calling the races with these guys. Uh, so I'm going to pass the microphone off to Mr. Junior. Yeah, I, um, I think the field for the, for the Sunday race is as level as could be hard to determine which one of those drivers is going to come away with a championship or two and um, looking forward to some practice to be able to uh, do my do my best uh, to handicap the field um, s seems like with the next gen car that's been more difficult to do no matter how much practice you see um, and obviously with the Xfinity cars, um, you know, got a couple cars of my own out there competing. So uh, some completely different um, set of nerves and anxieties over that. But it's an incredible uh, weekend in front of us and um, feel like that uh, we're going to we're going to see some something spectacular regardless across the board for both series. And, you know, that moment when the drivers get out of the car right there at the front, you know, the front straightaway at the start finish line. When they, you know, are realizing the uh, the reality of the situation that they are champion is quite a moment to see in person. In the last couple of years we've been here, that's that's been that's that's always hit home for me to watch somebody go through that and. Um, you, we, we watch these drivers try their hardest not to show any emotion to us in this room all year long, right? They work against us to try to, you know, we're trying to pry it out of them, and they're trying not to let too much out. And, man, that moment right there is is uh, the floodgates open up. So I'm looking forward to that part of the weekend and, and uh, closing out strong. Um, well, I think they're both that have spoken of, said it right. I think we have a great stack up of drivers in both fields. Uh, I'm excited to see Dale squirm a little bit on Saturday. It's always good. His anxiety I appreciate because it shows how much he cares about his team and what he has invested in on Saturday. So uh, with two out there, it's going to be great to cover and get to see him really sit back and enjoy it as an owner. It's going to be fun. And then uh, I think he kind of said, I'm ready to kind of celebrate an accomplishment. You know, the playoffs are amazing and we celebrate the 16 that made, made it nine weeks ago. But until then, rarely do we celebrate the ones moving forward. When we go from 16 to 12, we focus on the four who didn't, or the four who didn't make it to eight, or the four who didn't advance last week, because they are the, probably the biggest stories. But this weekend's all the opposite, right? Instead of the who didn't, while it will be disappointment for three, um, even talking to the Xfinity drivers this morning, you know, kind of getting here, I think, is the goal, right? It comes down to one race. So... By no means is it luck. I think it's going to take an extraordinary performance because it is such an equal field, um, both on pit road, on top of the pit box, on the roof, and behind the wheel. I think it's going to take everything. Um, 
I think the landmines that are out there for the drivers or teams are kind of vast. It could kind of happen anywhere because I don't see a lot of weaknesses. But then when it's all over, to Dale's point, I love celebrating the accomplishment of winning. Um, that kind of goes away throughout the playoffs. And then when you get here and you get to crown a champion, um, it, it's something I wasn't able to do in my career is be a champion crew chief. Um, and I know that's what I wish I would have done. So when I get to see somebody else accomplish that, it's just, man, it's super remarkable. And I think it's one of those things, the lack of the accomplishment for me appreciates even more what they're able to do because I just know how hard this is uh, to get to this this level, either on Saturday or Sunday. Yeah, first, I just I, uh, I know I said this last year. I'm going to say it again. I just appreciate all the work you guys do. It's an incredible – an incredible amount of hard work, and uh, the the work you guys do is so important to covering this sport. And we see the hours you put in; it's nuts how many hours you guys work. And just want to say thank you because it's it you just guys just do a great job. Um, for me, I'm excited to see who can win their first championship. There's a lot of opportunities to for somebody to win their first. Uh, it's career changing. Uh, I say that as one that a guy that never won a championship, knowing that. Uh, that there's a hole there, not winning a championship. And to see somebody get a chance to win their first one, uh, a lot of opportunity for that this weekend. Um, the, the, we see the playoffs, what they do, the, the, the situations that it puts the drivers, the crew chiefs, the teams. It's, you know, you have to deliver. You have to do it right now. We've seen the, the incredible races that the playoffs have created, and that all ends here. And it, it's a, an amazing opportunity to see pit, you know, see the championship, you know, it can happen on pit road. It can. It's truly a team sport. And I think when it gets to a one race situation and a pit crew comes in running third and go out with the lead and they win a championship, it really emphasizes how big of a team sport it is. Uh, I, I love the fact that it's all because it's one race that all that gets magnified. Um, and as far you know, the weekend itself, you know, the, uh, they they were talking about the you know when the when the race is over. I love the energy. Like there's. It's an unmatched energy this weekend in the pre-race. Pre-race Sunday is wild. It is a incredible experience. You can feel the the tension. You can feel the emotion. It's uh, it's just being on pit road before the race. It is it is unmatched of anything I've ever experienced, and it's and it's consistent. Every year is like that. I brought a friend of mine three years ago to, to the championship race and he's been to some of the biggest sporting events in the world and he walked up to me and he said this is the coolest thing I've ever been part of he could feel it as well and so uh, just the whole energy around the playoffs and this race in particular it's just, it's just a lot of fun and the more of that our sport can have the better we'll be all right we're going to open up to questions here if you raise your hand we'll get a wireless microphone to you we'll start up here with Lee and then we'll work our way this way across the room Spencer, catch fence.com. Dale, back in the day, your dad could really talk some crap, right? Leading into a championship, he could get in these guys' heads. We sat there and talked to Blaney. He said, there's no animosity between any of us. I mean, this is like the kinder, gentler generation, right? And so um, what's missing? What are we missing here? Because we would go into media days back in Miami, and Tony Stewart would be throwing barbs at Carl Edwards and back and forth. We're not getting any of this. And I'm just wondering... Do we have to wait till Sunday to really see their, you know, fire come out? Well, maybe, um, you know, maybe we'll get lucky <clears throat> and, uh, you know, see that. But I just think it's co you know, coincidence more than anything. Um, you know, the you, the people that are, you know, the, the, the drivers that make up the four just happen to have, you know, very even – you know, calm personalities. They're just not very, you know, dynamic or aggressive. Um, <clears throat> but it's more, I think, more coincidence than anything. And maybe that's a bit unfortunate uh, on, you know, because it may run then on some storylines for us on, you know, sound bites and so forth today. But I honest, honestly believe, um, and Jeff, I think, and anyone else up here would say this, that when it comes down to it, um, they'll do whatever it takes, right? And ask for forgiveness later uh, to be able to be a champion. I just can't imagine them, um, you know, being within arm's reach of each other into that last corner and not getting some, you know, somewhat physical. 
it uh, just like Jeff said, it's life changing. And you, for a guy like Blaney, for example, has raced in the series for eight years and finally has this opportunity for the first time to go for a championship. You just do not know when you'll get that chance again, if ever. And uh, you can't let it. You can't expect it to, you know, to have that opportunity again. When it's in front of you, you got to take it. And I think they will, you know. I think they'll produce that on, on the, in the moment. We'll go to Greg and then Claire and then I believe Cole in the middle as we work over. Over here, Dale. Uh, Greg Engel, CupScene.com. Uh, Kevin Harvick's last race, obviously, is Sunday. He's stepping out of, in, uh, of the, the, the driver's seat and coming into the TV booth next year, um, kind of like you did. What are some of the challenges he's going to face, do you think, And uh, you know, as he makes that transition? And, and what do you think some of the advantages are? And I'll have a follow-up with Rick. He won't face any challenges. He's sharp, tough mentally already has experience his you know, one thing that's unique for him is um when they do the all drivers uh events he's the play-by-play -play guy you know he's 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 really gotten some pretty incredible experience already before he's going to get into the booth so he's been in probably some of the more high pressure situations and past with flying colors he seems completely relaxed in that scenario and so i don't think he'll have any challenges whatsoever and i think the fact that he has something everybody was telling me man you don't retire from racing you retire to something else and he's doing that and i talked to mcmurray this week on my podcast he said the same thing he said i believe being able to go into broadcasting or work for you know work on the tv side helped me uh, come to terms of you know with ending my driving career the way it did and um, you know when you end when you, if you end that career with nothing in front of you it's very difficult to to chart a path right but he he's got a he's very motivated he um, hates to lose and he'll be that way even in broadcasting right he'll want to win in every moment Thank you. And Rick, when, when these drivers come in, obviously they, they provide some great insight into the racing and, and some great color and some great commentary. Do you find that the, these, these guys that come in are already pretty polished when it comes to, you know, like Dale said, he's got some, they've got some experience doing the all, the all, the all drivers and stuff, or, or are there, there are places that, that you can help them shore up and, and become better in the TV booth? I think that's just a natural learning curve for all these uh, drivers that are out there. As a matter of fact, we, we sat down with Sam Mayer this morning, and it reminded me that Sam Mayer is only 20 years old. I mean, he's a very young guy. Uh, he was eager, um, but at the same time, he was respectful. And I just, uh, you know, Lee had mentioned earlier about, you know, there's no trash talking that whatever has happened up to this point. I think Sam is still, he's nervous to make some comment like that because he is 20 years old. He's young. He's in a, a new situation. Uh, at the start of the season, he didn't have a win. And now he's got multiple wins. He's got confidence. And he doesn't really know how to act yet. And so I don't know if they need training or if there's any kind of advice that you give to these guys. I think it's you learn on the fly. And I think that's what Sam Mayer right now is doing. At 20 years old, he's learning what it's like to sit in front of the media and have them ask questions and you know everything that he does and his mannerisms we see and we'll make comments on that and he's going to learn that you know when I broadcast that race on Saturday I'll talk about you know his you know maybe lack of confidence in front of us talking but he has he as far as the four guys we talk to he's the most confident of the four guys that we talk to about his driving ability so I would say that, you know, at 20 years old, he's going he's gonna to learn his way through. And I think all the drivers do that. And I think that's what's great about, you know, the truck series, the Xfinity series. It gives them that opportunity to learn uh, so that when they get to the highest level, uh, they're a little more polished and have a little better rapport uh, with all of us in this industry. Hi, Claire. Claire Beeline, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. And it fits right in with what you said, Rick, but... I'm sort of intrigued by the sense of panic that Denny Hamlin talked about how William Byron almost panicked in the car, but Rudy said that he made more changes to the car 
it, it, during the race last week than he had in 20 years, and that kind of blew my mind. And But this week, they're not counting points, right? So... A, you know, the younger drivers may be inclined to panic because it's they're learning as they go, as you mentioned. But then the ones who have, you know, who are not counting points, will it be a different race? Will there be the ability? And maybe, Dale, you would be good to talk about that because the, the not panicking in the car on such a big stage, lot, and especially for young drivers that haven't done it, but maybe with no points on the line, it will be easier and we won't see that. What do you think? Uh, you know, this, uh, it's a short race. Um, <clears throat> you, by the time you realize in the moment you're about to panic, it's pretty much already over. Um, and the way this racetrack races and the way it runs, I mean, it just, <clears throat> the race, it back so that the panic only happens when the reality of the situation is like oh crap i can't recover from it so here with it being points i mean somebody can have trouble early in the race or run bad early in the race i mean jimmy johnson won a championship but did not have the best car most of the day so you don't you don't have to panic here because uh, you're simply just have to beat those other guys and you have a certain amount of time to do it all right we're going to go to cole and then over to zach and then jared Cole Kusumano with the Arizona Republic. Uh, for Steve, uh, I'm curious, what challenges does Phoenix present for crew chiefs? And in turn, what makes that a, this a good place for the, the championship? Well, I think, you know, it's the challenges are kind of, there's not a lot of opportunity to be creative. You're either good or you're not. Um, and there's no real place to hide here when you're bad. I know the two ends are different, and you would think they would compromise, but the truth is what we're going to see on Sunday is the best of the best perform at its best. So if you're compromising on either end, you're dead. You're done in the water. Um, somebody will have both ends figured out. So that's what makes this just so different because coming here, um, we came here in man, like 07, chasing Jimmy in the points, and you know, we ran like, I don't know, seventh or eighth. And he won. 
And chasing him in the points is kind of like what these guys are up against, right? If you don't – Denny said it best last week. You know, he knew going to Martinsville it was a must win, regardless of the math, regardless of the numbers. If these four drivers here don't think they have to be in victory lane on the last lap of this race, then they're out. You, you have the wrong mentality coming in. So that's the challenge of a crew chief. It's not just this racetrack. It's – rarely do you have to be perfect. What makes the Daytona 500 such a big deal is it happens once a year. You get one chance to get it right. Well, th- what we're going to see on Sunday here, maybe a once in a career. I mean, you don't know how many times you're going to get back here. We all try to pick the championship four every year, and you might get one or two, maybe three in a good year, but there's always some surprises. Um, this track is perfect because Phoenix, in my mind, is a big event town. When I landed at the commercial airport, it was obvious NASCAR was in town. When you pull up to the racetrack and you cross over the bridge, it kind of stands on its own at the base of the mountain. It it, it has a big event feel. Um, And I think NASCAR deserves that. I think um, Phoenix and everyone here at the Speedway deserve, uh, you know, a round of applause for what they've done here because it it feels like it's this moment. And, And I think that's what makes this great is it's a track that... You know, it's funny, our argument, I laughed, and he said it's almost a short track because that's our argument because I said this is a short track, and he disagrees. But that's the beauty of Phoenix. It's not really a short track. It's not really a mile and a half. It's not really this. It's not really that. It's not really this. So if you're only going to have a one-race championship in a season that runs such a variety of racetracks, I think you have to go somewhere that has the same variety of challenges in one location. And there are others that exist, but this is a real crown jewel for that. Two ends, very different. High speed from a crew chief, you have to have a great aerodynamic platform. Mechanical grip is still going to matter. Pit stops, it kind of challenges every aspect of your game. Thank you. I'm going to go over to Zach, and then we'll go to Jared and go down that row. Zach Sterniel at NASCAR.com. This is really for any of you four, but um, how do you help paint what each of these championship four contender stories are, and especially – um, it, does that start pre-race? Does that happen throughout the course of the event? Because um, you guys are tasked with helping the viewers kind of digest what they're seeing. So how do you make sure that they they understand either these guys' backgrounds or what their seasons have been to kind of culminate in what they're seeing on, either on Saturday or Sunday? Well, hopefully it started 20 weeks ago for us. Uh, we hope that we've been telling the people that have been watching the story. We know that uh, this race on Sunday is going to be a, a lot larger audience than what we get on a weekly basis just because of what's on the line. And so it does start in pre-race. Uh, I think uh, our whole pre-race group does a phenomenal job of setting the stage for what's out there and who the players are. Uh, it'll go into you know the start of the broadcast where we will – uh, individually, we'll each introduce one of the drivers um, and tell the fans that are watching just a little bit about them, a little more that maybe they didn't know. Uh, because there, I'm sure there are going to be people that are going to watch that don't have a favorite going in. And so we want to give them something that they will latch on to and say, okay, I want that guy to win. And that's kind of our task. Um, at NBC, we like to think that we're pretty good storytellers, and so we want to make sure that we can tell each championship four's story uh, to the best of our abilities and to you know paint the picture of what that person is, the, the path that they've taken to get here, um, you know, the different things that they've had to overcome, what they, you know, what they did throughout the playoffs to make it to this point, uh, and kind of just give people that foundation so that when they're watching, they can say, okay, I understand. You know, this guy won at this race to get to here, and, uh, you know, he was able to overcome the pressure. Uh, or, you know, this guy has been consistent throughout the season, and that's why he's here. So uh, we just want to make sure that everybody knows, you know, when the green flag flies or, or right after the green flag, you know, goes up, that they know the players well enough that they can cheer for one or the other. And that if they do something on the track that they don't like, they can boo for it. They can, you know, go against them as well. So uh, that's the great thing about this sport is, you know, we, we have the opportunity and the time to tell the personalities of this sport. And hopefully uh, we will do that to the best of our ability and we'll have fans out there that will appreciate them. The only thing I would add is, and this is the beauty of TV, you know, we have a, like a small part in that job. 
you know, our producer does an amazing job of trying to steer the broadcast. But, you know, that task that you asked about is everyone's. So Jeff's going to have a chance. I will. Dale, Rick. Um, Pit Road will. Our director will with pictures. Like, there's a lot of ways to kind of identify somebody. And, and there's a reason a fan may like or hate a driver, which is great to be on both sides. Um, so really, it's just it's part of the entire broadcast. I don't think one aspect of the broadcast can do it by itself. So I think that's the biggest answer to your question is we just really need to listen to all of the talent. We have a lot of voices on the air, see the pictures that are being shown, listen to what the truck is telling us, where we need to go next. Um, you know, it reminds me of being a crew chief, right? My job is to make sure everybody was kind of pointed in the same direction. Even if it was the wrong direction, we had to be in the same direction. Uh, and that's kind of up to the truck. They point us. And, and we just need to listen to one another and kind of follow along. The track will take care of all the excitement in my mind. Um, just tell everybody why something's happening. They can see what's happening. Just tell them why. why. Why to a casual fan that may have tuned in, you know, why is it happening this way? It doesn't. There's a lot of things that sometimes you scratch your head about. We should try to take away, you know, that question of what's happening. I'm going over there to Jared. We'll work down that line. Uh, Jared Haas uh, with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette and Front Stretch. This question's for Dale. Um, how have you impacted Sam Mayer and seen the growth with him in the past uh, 13 races, winning four of them? He said once you get that one win, then you get the next win, the next win. It's a domino effect. How have you seen that as a team owner for Sam? Yeah, we, um, <clears throat> we know Sam can run fast laps. Um, know he's you know, won races in, in the ARCA series and ran well in other levels of competition. Um, he would go and compete head-to-head -head and, and on, on a rare occasion beat Josh in the late model stock car, which Josh is widely considered one of the one of the best in that type of vehicle. So, you know, I knew he was fast, but he's young and mistake-prone. And so this year – I would pick with him a lot about hitting the wall on lap one. He did that quite a bit uh, first probably 60% of the year. There were a couple races where right at the very start, you know, he's 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 hitting the wall and he would hit the wall and then, you know, get himself behind and end up coming back and finishing fifth. And he'd get out of the car and go, I ran fifth. Pretty good, huh? And uh, he was proud of his ability to come back from his mistake but it was like happening on a you know every other week and uh so to get him to understand like how that mistake was not you know the comeback is admirable but the mistake was keeping him from winning races and as I would I would tell him like man if you don't hit that wall you don't you you run you win the race instead of running fifth and um so he uh He's still young. He's still mistake prone. He's still going to have a lot to learn. He's got a long road ahead of him and a long path as any driver would be in that position that he's in. If he wants to succeed at the cup level, he's got a, he's got a lot more to learn. And, and we're, we're thrilled to have the opportunity to be part of his story and to help him know how to get better. Um, I got to give Marty, Marty, uh, his crew chief, a ton of, uh, credit as well, because, I've learned um, over the years that it takes a certain type of crew chief for every individual. There's no prototype crew chief that fits all race car drivers. And what the type of person that Sam needed was Marty. And Marty has obviously worked together before. Marty knew what he was getting himself into, but he holds him accountable. You got to, you know, when you got a young driver, sometimes you got to hold him accountable out of the car. You know, what are they doing, preparing, working toward? And Sam came in there today and told us about all the hours of film he's watched. He's watched every race that they ran here in the last five years or whatever. I mean, he was not doing those things six months ago or a year ago. He didn't know that he needed to do those things. So um, a lot of people have been in his ear this year. And I'm thankful that he's coming back so we can continue this this, this uh this process and, and continue to make him better. All right. We have a couple more minutes left with our panel. want to try to get through as many as possible. So Justin, we'll start with you and we'll try to go to Dustin and Jenna before we get out. 
Uh, Justin Schuler kicking the tires. Uh, year two of the next gen car. I just kind of wanted your guys' perspective. What what has kind of impressed you with this next gen car? Um, and then on the flip side, what what would you like to see uh, be changed with this car? Obviously, a lot of truck talk with the short track package, but I know Jeff Dale, you guys have been behind the wheel yourself. Latart, you've been on the box, and then Rick, you've called I don't know how many races. So lots of good perspectives. I'd like to hear you guys what your thoughts are. So I, the, the mile and a half racing is really good. I mean, the, the mile and a half racing the, is is as good as we've ever seen in my eyes. Um, Martinsville, I thought, was a step forward with with what Goodyear brought as a tire. Teams having teams having some more education on the car. Uh, Martinsville was definitely a step forward. That was the best Martinsville race we've seen with it with this car. Um, the 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 willingness of NASCAR to say, okay, yes, the 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 uh, short track road course program does need to improve. Uh, their willingness to go try other things, try stuff. There's a test here after this race. Um, I think that's a positive. You know, if anyone, if any of us thought that they were going to unveil a brand new car and it all worked perfectly, we were, you know, we were a little bit too optimistic. Um, if Martinsville is going to be a bad race, that's a damn good race. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I thought Martinsville was a really good race this last one. So, um, the ability for for change to happen and uh, and impact the car uh, is a positive. Uh, certainly, the negatives early were some, you know, some safety stuff. They addressed most of that. So, uh, the ability to, when they make a change, it go across the whole field. Um, I, I think that's extremely positive. But I'm, I'm, I'm every every mile and a half race we do is it's really good racing. That's that's been its from a competition standpoint. That's been its most successful part. Um, from on top of the pit box, I, I am. This is awful to say, but I think. I don't care how many winners we have because way more than just the car goes in if you win or not. So I know we had a lot of winners last year, but I thought the speed was relatively consistent with certain teams, and this year has been anything but. Ryan Blaney um, had a spectacular car at Miami and backed it up again at Martinsville, and I don't think anybody would have said that six months ago. So the fact that an organization can find something. We talk a lot about similar parts. There's obviously still enough development, and I don't think we're anywhere close to – started on where the development of this car really is so the fact that teams can find more speed and be more competitive tells me that the car has enough bells whistles knobs levers whatever you have to pull to make it go faster they're f continuing to develop and find those that to me is the most important part i agree with jeff uh, you know i think the um, mile and a half stuff's amazing uh, a lot of fun calling those races and watching those races play out um and this car has allowed the drivers to get in proximity of each other a little bit differently than the old car, which is more uh, entertaining for me. Um, and uh, there's still some strategy to the lead car in terms of being able to try to dirty the air up, but you're, but you're, you know, you don't have such an advantage to completely dirty up the entire track. Um, so I like all those things. Atlanta this year, the second Atlanta might have been the most entertaining race I've seen in and I can't remember how long. Um, and uh, I, I, t I walked out of that one just in amazed at what we were seeing and what we got to see, even in a rain-shortened finish. Um, I was as entertained as I'd been, and, and I can't remember. But uh, the short track stuff would be definitely top of my list in, 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 in what needs to improve. Uh, along with the road courses, I think whatever maybe they learn at the short tracks will help the road courses as well. But um, yeah, I think and and to Jeff's point, you know, they're making some efforts to fix it. They're acknowledging that it needs improving. The tire at Martinsville was a great um, move in the right direction, possibly. I'm sure that Goodyear and NASCAR have learned a ton from that already. Um, and plan to um, continue uh, trying to improve that. So, um, I, I, you know, is I'm I'm excited. I think it's all moving in the right direction, and I feel like that NASCAR has been moving in a good direction for some time now. So, um, I'm, I'm th I think we're all in a great position uh, to continue to see great racing, and um, looking forward to next year. I'm a fan of the sport, and so my favorite part about this car has been what Steve and our production crew has done with our virtual car to where 
they educate us as to why. You know, when, when everybody was hearing uh, toe links were bent or broke and, there, you know, nobody in NASCAR was they're thinking, well, we don't know what that is. And when he's able to break the car down, explain it, um, explain transaxle, explain all the, the different things that happened with this car, I think that helps our fans even more to appreciate, you know, what these guys are doing with the cars. So uh, that's been my favorite part of this new car is just, you know, what Steve and our, our production crew, our truck, uh, is able to do as far as explaining everything about the newness of this car. All right, we're going to wrap quickly with Dustin so we can get everyone back on schedule. Uh, Dustin Long, NBC Sports. For each of you, what is one thing in particular you will be watching for in Sunday's race you'll be focused on? And in that particular area, which of the four drivers, teams, crew chiefs do you think might have the advantage at this point? So I'll be looking at uh, short run speed versus long run speed and then what kind of race are we going to get when it counts. And we've seen, you know, cars be able to blast off with great takeoff speed but not be so good on the long run. Uh, and, what, and, you know, does that work out? And, and, you know, not every car and driver needs to win the race. Not every car and driver will, would win a race in the same way. You have to take advantage of the strength of your car and you have to try to get a situation where you cover the weaknesses up. So what is the weakness of each team, whether it's pit stops, whatever it happens to be, short run, long run, whatever that happens to be, what is the weakness, and can that get covered up with the way the race falls? And then who has what strength and how can they execute on that? I don't have an answer for what I'm looking for because I don't – until we see it, we won't know. And every year it's been a little something different. Pit stops last year were huge. So uh, Keselowski, I thought he could have won a championship a few years ago. Pit stops were horrible. So I don't know it until I see it. Um, but but how do you cover up your weaknesses and how do you take advantage of your strengths? I'm going to watch the pit stops he just talked about because I think there's a signature throughout the day. I don't care if they lose spots, gain spots. I don't really even care how fast they are. If you watch enough pit stops, you can tell when they're easy and when they're hard. Uh, it's like a football team going down. You can tell when the offense is working and when it isn't, regardless what the stats might say. So I'm going to be watching the pit stops to see who looked the most effortless for the first three or four because as the pressure builds, the ones that were already on the edge of disaster, they'll be pushed over. The ones that have been doing it very comfortably all day long, they are just sitting back. All they want is the ball, and that's the one that's going to make the difference in the end. I was hoping they weren't going to say pit stops, but they both said pit stops. <laughs> Um, you think it's going to come down to that? I got a feeling it's some something to do with the pit stops. Um, yeah, I you know wh the the person that come off pit road first the last time they plan on coming to pit road that the we we um, you know we have this cool stat in the back in the back of the racing insights data that uh, talks about four tire stops, average four tire stops, who's got the best pit crew, who's had the fastest stop at every race. And um, you have to pay attention to that because you know in this moment of the season is when that's going to start to really come into play. Um, and it seems like more, more often than not, the pick crews help decide who wins this championship. They'll do that. They might not affect every race throughout the season, but they certainly have been a big player in this one. And so uh, certainly, you know, with – with Jeff, you know, long run, short run speed, trying to see that in practice if you're lucky enough to really really be able to see, you know, understand what's going on. Um, and then, in, you know, <clears throat> I feel like the advantage goes to Blaney. His average finish here in the next gen car, his ability to be competitive in the last handful of races, the momentum. You know, I wouldn't say that Martinsville and Phoenix are very similar, but I think the the speed that he had at Martinsville was clearly ahead above the rest of the field. Some of those components or thoughts or theories could probably lend themselves to being fast here. Um, I just feel like that he's in a really good position to to win him a championship. So um, <clears throat> that's it, man. I guess to play off of what those three said, after every pit stop, there's a restart. And so I'm going to be watching, I think, the restarts and who's doing the best at restarts here because this is a difficult restart zone. Um, it's just awkward when you're in the middle of a turn uh, to be 
getting back into the gas and racing right away. Uh, but with the parameters of you can't, you know, fan out until you get to the start finish line. Uh, so I'm going to watch that. And uh, you know that obviously somebody has a great pit stop and they have that track position. It will be huge. But who will who will get so aggressive on the restart that in turns one and two, you know, they do something crazy, you know, dive down to the apron to try to make a pass if it's a late restart. And so that's what I'll be looking for. Thank you guys very much for all your time. We appreciate it. Um, again, Xfinity on USA mm -hmm. Saturday. Uh, it starts broadcast starts at 630 Eastern and Cup is NBC and Peacock. Uh, streaming live on Peacock. That's 2 p.m. Eastern. So we appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. And to echo what Jeff said earlier, uh, you know, and, and you had mentioned, you know, how do we tell the stories? Well, it all starts with you guys because you're the ones who are telling these stories before we even come on the air. So uh, again, we appreciate everything you guys do. So thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.